think for those of us involved in blended learning, we're excited about it. But again, uh, there's many things taking place right now in higher education and the lives of students, faculties, and administrators. And I think it's important that we identify what are the key challenges and issues with blended learning right at the beginning of a learning event so that we're all clear about what may or what are some of the risks. So what I'd like to do is identify the challenges from a student perspective, a faculty uh, perspective, and an administration or an institutional perspective. My observation with students is technology is not the major challenge. I know that our digital tools will continue to change and evolve, but from my perspective, the major change is students' attitude or approach to learning. Rather than being passive, just sitting back to receive information, now they've got to be active, engage, and take more responsible for their learning. And for a lot of our students who've been conditioned over many years just to receive information, this is the number one challenge, is to become more active and to learn to develop skills to manage their time and manage when they study. So the biggest issue and the challenge from students, from my perspective, is taking responsibility for their learning. Teachers, faculty, people like me, I think everyone in the world is busy, but we have a lot of demands. Not only are we required to teach, we're required to do research and required to do service to the university and the community. Often these demands are in competition with each other and we just feel overwhelmed. And what we do, we default or we go to the activity where we get the most reward. In higher education, that's usually research, not teaching because research is where we get our funding and it's where we get our publications and our prestige from. I think one of the challenges that we really face in blended learning, and this just doesn't for blended learning, this is teaching in higher education, is we need to increase the opportunities for reward and recognition and support for not just research, but for teaching excellence. And I think that's something that we're working slowly to overcome by integrating research with our teaching. We're starting to see more and more research on our teaching practice. The last challenge and I find, and this is the, the largest challenge from my perspective, is the institution. Why is the institution engaging in a blended approach to learning? It needs to be aligned, it needs to be part of the mission statement of the university. It needs to be clear that the university's role is to help develop, prepare young people for a challenging and complex future so that they can be contributing citizens of our society, whether the country is Brazil or Canada. So what we have to do is very clearly link the mission statement for blended learning to what we want our students to do and become once they graduate. If we don't make that connection, it's frustrating for students, faculty, and for the administration because they don't understand why they're engaging in a blended approach to learning. I think one of the challenges for all of us is how do we develop an institutional approach to blended learning where everyone, students, faculty, the administration, and our community is engaged and excited about blended learning. And I want to be very careful with my advice because again, one size doesn't fit all. I'm going to give an example of my institution and I think some of the lessons learned from my institution will apply other way. But one of my biggest takeaways or my learning moments is that you have to respect the culture of your institution. You have to build upon where the institution is already. You can't just bring this in from top down. This has to be integrated between the students, the faculty, and the administration. So to begin, I'd like you to tell you the story about our institutional approach to blended learning. And again, I come from Mount Royal University, which is located in Calgary, Alberta, in the western part of Canada. Our story begins with leadership. 
And again, I think it's important we remember that leadership takes place across an institution, not just with administration, just not with faculty either, but also with student leadership and engagement. We had a very wise academic leader, almost like a vice rector of, of your institution here at Sao Carlos, who decided we needed to make change. We needed to transform the learning experience on our campus at our university for everyone. And what she did is she created not a committee, but a group. She called it the Teaching Learning Technology Group. And I think this was so wise. This group was composed of academic leaders, of deans and chairs. It was composed of leaders of all the different areas such as IT, the Teaching and Learning Center, the library, the bookstore, the registration. But I think most importantly, it was also composed of teachers and students. Everybody who was involved, in English we call it a stakeholder, everyone is involved. And the first thing she did was she spent a lot of time listening. Rather than telling, she listened. She listened to what was happening. And again, I think this is the key to good teaching, is listening to our students. She spent a lot of time listening and then working with the group she created a series of guidelines for engagement, what it meant to be engaged in our institution. And very quickly we discovered that engagement also equaled blended learning because we wanted our students engaged not just in the classroom, not just in their homes, but in the community. With that, she was able to work with our community partners in order to find funding for faculty to work with students. So again, I think this is really important. The learning partnership was throughout. Learning partnership with the original group that came up with the mandate, the charter, the guidelines for blended learning. But also when we got involved in teacher development, it was development not just for the teachers, by the teachers. We had students involved in partnership. And I think this was very, very wise because as we were redesigning our courses for blended learning, most of our courses were very traditional, just face-to-face. -face. We had very few distance courses. The students were able to share their experiences with the teachers about what was working and what wasn't working in the traditional environment so that we were making changes in partnership together and students felt empowered th through the process that blended learning wasn't something that was being forced on them, is that they were creating it in partnership. So again, the first step was the key was to develop an institutional mandate and guidelines for blended learning in partnership with everyone, all stakeholders, students, teachers, administrators, the staff of the university, and some of our external community. The second part was to develop a teacher development program where the faculty, the teachers, were working in partnership with students to develop their courses, redesign them for blended learning. And the third part, which I think is the most important, is evaluating, collecting data continuously about what's working and not working. Sometimes we often feel good. We think we're making a difference as teachers, but then when we talk to our students, they say, no, this doesn't make sense. You're frustrating me. You think you know, and you do know, you are the expert, but you are not helping me become part of your community. So we had the institutional documents, we had the teacher training program, but then we have evaluation. And we've continued the evaluation process, and I think this is very important. We now call it the scholarship at teaching and learning where the teachers identify problems they're having with student learning, work with students in partnership to try and solve those problems, but they're collecting data as they solve the problems. They're doing very, 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 very empowering action research, collecting the data, analyzing it, and then presenting it and publishing it not just in Mount Royal materials, but in external publications and external conferences so that the greater community can learn from us. So three steps that I think that are important for a successful institutional approach to blended learning 
is beginning in partnership to develop the institutional vision, the documents, the guidelines for a blended learning approach at your institution. The second is developing the teacher training program, but making sure that the students are partners with the faculty in the redesign process. And last but not least, providing the support for the faculty and the students to evaluate these blended learning courses. Are they making a difference? And if there's problems, what are the problems and how do we address those problems? I think for all of us, what's happening in this day and age is we're becoming busier. It, it seems like uh, we're all trying to become our own computers. Um, I think some of us wish we had 36 hours in the day. And I can only speak for myself, but as a faculty member, I find it very challenging because I have so many competing demands. I've got my research, which, which takes a large priority because that's where I receive a lot of my funding and my recognition. I've got service commitments um, within the university, outside of the university, but my passion has always been teaching. And I think for a lot of us, that's why we became faculty or why we wanted to go into higher education is we love to teach. And I think it's very difficult for us these days because there's very limited time for us to practice and learn about teaching. And I know at, at many teaching and learning centers, they offer wonderful workshops and opportunities for us. And often, I'll be honest myself, I, I sign up for them. But then when another commitment comes up, maybe it's a meeting with a student or it's a departmental meeting, I'm not able to go. And it, it makes me feel bad. It makes me feel guilty. One of the things I've personally been trying to do and, and we've been trying to do at our university is figure out ways that we can integrate teaching with our research practice. And, and this can happen beyond just education. I've seen it happen in the natural sciences areas like engineering, mathematics, um, the sciences. I've seen it happen in the social sciences, the humanities and philosophies. Is all of us have experience and, and we have a passion with our research. And again, we have the passion with the teaching. So I think it's wonderful if we can put it together. And I think that's where potentially we need to change with our faculty development is rather than teaching me how to use the tools, teach me about these new ways, these new pedagogical ways, but then work with me to research whether these pedagogical approaches are actually working in practice. And I think this becomes exciting for both those people involved in teaching development and faculty because we can see how the partnership, by working together, we contribute each of our strengths and by collaboratively working together, we create some amazing research. So my response to challenges about teacher development is I think we're past the time where, where, where we have the time or the, the initiative, the engagement to learn about tools. But what we're excited to do is to overcome challenges, problems with our teaching practice and creating research opportunities around that so that we can get funding and recognition.